I also became the game show expert at the network. We were wanted to try a game show out in uh, prime time for the, in the summer, and I developed two shows. One with Bob Stewart, you know, who used to work for Goodson on on Password. A show called Faces Familiar, you know, which was the format was scrambled faces. You had to identify who the faces were. And the other show was called Hollywood Squares, which I literally created with Heater Quigley. You know, they had originally come in with a show called Three in a Row. And I said, well, that's, well, that's kind of complicated. Why don't we do X's and O's and it'll be tic-tac-toe? And wrote it down on a napkin. And uh, at any rate, it was Hollywood Squares. The only difference between what's on the air now and, uh, and, and back then was that Burt Parks was the MC. And, uh, and we did that uh, pilot, and we did Faces Familiar. The guy who directed Hollywood Squares is a man by the name of Larry White, you know, who I used to work with at CBS, who, uh, who before I got CBS, was head of daytime. And, uh, and he directed the show and then moved over to NBC as head of daytime. And, you know, that, that great impeccable taste that I had, I had these two shows, I had to pick one, and I picked Faces Familiar, a Friday night at 9.30. And the first thing he did at NBC was to buy Hollywood Squares for 11.30. And uh, changed the host, that Peter Marshall, put it on, and it was an enormous hit. That was one of the, one of the worst calls I ever made in, in my life. But uh, the game show area, like serials, is an area unto itself. I mean, it's just populated by really strange people and uh, you know it's there's a lot you have to learn <clears throat> about what works and what doesn't work and I had a I had an opportunity to observe uh, from the best now I had great respect uh, for Mark Goodson uh, who I you know I thought was uh, there was nobody who came close to him in terms of his talent and knowledge of game shows I mean he was and if he would come in with an idea, you know, you had to listen. And uh, the chances are 99 out of 100 that you would buy the show just because he was involved in it. Uh, you know, then you had people like Heater Quigley who were not in the, in the same league as Mark Goodson, but were good, dependable game show producers. You know, and they did shows like uh, Hollywood Squares or before that Video Village, uh, Celebrity Game, and uh, Monty Hall was another one. And then out of nowhere came Chuck Barris with his own brand of, uh, he was like the fox of, uh, of the 60s and 70s. You know, what the Fox Network was to the, the big three networks, that's uh, what Chuck Barris was to the establishment with Dating Game and Newlywood Game and The Gong Show. And uh, so that was a, like a whole new take on, on game shows. But what happened is that over a period of time, game shows got in uh, disfavor. And that as you moved into the, the late 70s and 80s, you know, the games were replaced by serials and, uh, and talk. And uh, right now on the, on the three network schedules, there's but a single game, which is Price is Right. And that's, uh, that's about it. You know, everything else is either talk or, or serial. And, uh, and there are very few games in syndication, it's just a, a handful. And I, you know, I think one of the problems being that the demographics on games are usually very old. 